So this is, is such a, a great movie to watch more than once if you can. That was the second time I was watching it, and you really see all the, the pieces kind of fit into place. Um, how did you guys get involved with it? How were you casting your roles? Um, <laughs> I don't know if I need that. Do I need that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I used to be an actor. Now I work on television. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I, I got involved. Uh, it, was, it was kind of a... Uh, a thing where Jordan j just called me up because we'd worked we'd worked together on his uh, Key and Peele show and uh, we'd hooked up again when uh, they were doing Fargo uh, and we we hooked up again then and, and he talked to me about it and it was kind of a it was kind of a, a joy because it, it was a movie to do with friends because like, I'm good friends with Catherine Keener and Brad. Uh, I had done a couple of movies with or right in a row before this one. So it was a movie with friends, and I was thrilled to be involved. How about you, Betty? I, um, hello? Can you, is this on? I think it is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't want to ruin my lipstick, though. Um, I got an audition notice. It's sort of the opposite of you. Um, um, from my manager and put myself on tape. And um, and while I was doing I was doing that while I was backpacking through Peru, which was which was quite a challenge to say the least, um, because I didn't have a smartphone. I, I you know I was I was like, does anyone speak English? I don't you know. So, um, but I managed to get it in, and like a month later, um, got to meet with Jordan, and it was probably the best audition of my life. Um, yeah, and I you know I. I left that audition feeling like no matter what, I I just felt inspired and um, he's just great. And, you know, in the in the room, he was I could just tell that he was a wonderful director. And so yeah. So what's his style like on the set? I mean, he comes from a comedy background, from improv. I mean, did he encourage you guys to kind of uh, you know improv at all, or was it all pretty st sticking? I know you only had twenty three days to shoot the whole thing, so I don't imagine a lot of time to play well, around. Well, neither of us was there for that long because it was only a twenty three day shoot. I think I was there for maybe four four days, so we didn't do a lot of. I didn't do a lot of improv. Did you? No, not really. But there were a couple things that had to be worked out or worked through for instance the looking out of the window yeah the door that on page that was very different and it was a very sort of it, it was me you can see in the trailer or one of the trailers it's me sort of like looking at my team <laughs> and i we tried it so many times and it just he i don't know I, it just wasn't what he was wanting so finally we got to a point where it was just like cold stare and um yeah so definitely there were moments that we just just there were not the in the script of, absolutely yeah, and then the that of. that's always the case and he's but he's really collaborative he yeah, always super. is yeah he wants he and i think that's one of the greatest things that he did for this movie was the casting i think the casting was unbelievable it was so great it was mm -hmm. perfect on and, and he does like go into his impersonations like at the drop of a, a hat like you don't even need to ask him you just like give him a little look and he'll be like okay <laughs> like dude i'm not gonna try but like he's yeah and did you have discussions with him about your character characters i mean they're both such distinctive unusual kind of people um did you guys talk about you know what was what was really going on with them or or did you kind of develop them with him uh yeah it there was there was quite a bit of discussion, and I think throughout the process, um, I mean, he definitely always knew what he wanted, and he was very direct, <laughs> um, which is good in a director. Um, and so, but I think there were moments like my sort of process or evolution of the character was going from a place of trying to play at you know, an old white lady. I was like, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm an old white lady. Like, let me play that. But you know, it, it, it had to sort of transition into this, from a place of playing at to a place of, you know, being possessed by this woman, this white woman. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So. What about you, Stephen? I mean, I don't know. We, the most 
toying around that we did, I think, was in uh, in the scene where I'm in the, the bald, in the, in the television scene. Um, uh, I think most of the words were the same, but we tried it many different ways. Well, maybe five times. We did it five times. Uh, and and he would always have some really concrete suggestions. And the, I think one of the best ones was in one of the last takes, he said, I, do something at the end to indicate that you're you're finished. And, and I, I just said, I'm done. Yeah. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but it... It, it was. It kind of made the scene for me because, like, okay, he's like, yeah, and I'm done. So, and then we go. So he, he's very collaborative. He's great. And how did you guys approach these characters physically? Because Stephen, you're playing a, a blind character. I know you have a background as a dancer. And it seems like the way Georgina moves is very uh, precise. I mean, how did you kind of build the characters from the outside in? Uh, well, he gave me uh, I, I, the cane to work with. You know, I didn't have a lot of time, but I, I played with it the night before. For the thing, and I'd done a, a blind guy on in O oh Brother Where Art Thou, so I, I kind of had the uh, a thing where where you're you're basically staring at one thing, but you're looking at every, you're 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 sensing everything around you. So I'd I'd had some experience with that, so it, that was just kind of fun. Um, I did a lot of. Um, I watch a lot of old horror movies and uh, watched Bride of Frankenstein and <laughs> loved everything she was doing. Even though she shows up in like the last two minutes of the film, I was just like, yes, I'm all about this Bride of Frankenstein. And so, uh, yeah, I stole a lot of what she does. And <laughs> um, I mean, I and to say all that is to say that I felt like I had freedom to be absurd and to explore, you know, in weird ways. And while it's very extremely horrifying that this character and this position, this, you know, the state she's in, um, there's just, it's just so out there, <laughs> this transplant, this, you know, combining of two people that, you know, I really just took to it and played a lot. And Jordan had a lot of like, walk really fast here. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And it'd be like, faster. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> there's a lot of just like simple, playful things. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of discussion about what this movie is. Is it a horror movie? Is it a comedy? Is it a drama? What did you think of it as when you were making it? Mean, do you think about that when you're approaching a role? I mean, Steve I thought it was a really good script. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's pretty much why I do stuff these days is the script. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's hard to make um, uh, gold out of straw, but this was gold already and you make it into something else. So uh, for me, it, I always start with that. But I, yeah, I was thrilled to be involved in it. I can't remember the question now. Just to, did you think of it as a I'm over 60, genre? so I, I <laughs> barely move. Well, you've done everything. I mean, you've done every genre of film and television there is, practically. I mean, do you approach roles differently when you know, okay, this is going to be a, a comedy, this is going to be a drama, this is going to be a, a scary movie? Mm, I think that's always different. Sometimes I approach it because which shoes you should wear would be the best way to go, because mm -hmm. the way that you feel when you walk. And, and sometimes I completely take it from inside the script and go out. So that's, that's, that's a different thing every time. With this, I, I I just felt I knew the guy. Um, I, I'm, I was a Southern, I mean, I went to University of Florida, so I was a Southern guy. I knew all these actors from Alabama and Georgia. We'd all worked in New York in, in the mid to late 70s through the 80s. So I, I felt, I, and I'd done a lot of Southern theater, so I, I, I felt I knew the guy pretty well. And I think Jordan felt that as well, that he, we didn't need to to do too much discussion of it. I mean, because the script is so good. And Betty, you did another horror satire kind of movie, one of the Purge yes. uh, films. Do you uh, have an affinity for that particular combination of uh, um, genres? Apparently. I mean, <laughs> I just, you know, I like to work, so <laughs> I'll take it where I can get it. <laughs> um, but, well, the the link is Blumhouse. Um, they, he... Blumhouse produces both films, um, and they've actually hired me for 
a couple other ones that haven't come out yet, but um, yes, thank you. <laughs> yes, working actors, we, we like that, we applaud that. Um, <laughs> yes, um, yeah, so I, I, I mean, I think it's pretty wonderful to be a part of those worlds, and yes, because they're both saying something folded in or enveloped in this, you know, genre film, and that's, it's really, it's especially with this film, it's so just brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it seems like Get Out has transcended whatever genre you might want to try to yeah. put it in. I mean, why do you think it's resonated with audiences the way it has just beyond being an entertaining, scary, fun movie? Well, he calls it a, a social thriller, which it is, but it's also a race movie and it's also a, uh, a comedy and a horror film. So it's really hard to describe to your friends. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you just kind of have to see it, I guess. Yeah. Um, well, how did each of you get involved in acting? Uh, Stephen, you grew up moving around quite a bit, I, I've heard. Uh, yeah, I moved around. <clears throat> I ended up going to the University of Florida back in the early 70s, and it was easy to get in then. <laughs> um, so I, I, I was in journalism classes and took basically an elective, an acting class, and went, I like that. And then I got used in more directing scenes. Uh, and by you know, two, a year and a half, and then I switched majors and, and did it from there. But I was lucky enough to, right after I finished college, I, I went to these auditions called the SEC, SETCs. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and I got a job here uh, in a bus and truck uh, company called the National Shakespeare Company, which was uh, a company that did nine months, toured, toured the country nine months of the year doing three shows in rep and whichever one they hired you for, you did that night. And, so in, and it was always different because you, you were doing a show maybe in a, in a room this size in a junior college or you'd go to West Point, which is a 5,000 seat theater. So it was always a different show. So I feel like I got most of my acting training on that tour on those three years that I did that. And Betty, you uh, originally want to be a veterinarian, I've read. Is that true? Yes. I, yeah. <laughs> when did the turn take place to uh, what, dancing first and then acting, I guess, after that, right? Yeah, that's exactly what happened. And I mean, you know, being young and sort of kind of being carefree, feeling like you have the rest of your life, you, you know, this feeling of immortality. I just, I said, I'll do this and maybe I'll go back to that. Now I want to do this and maybe I'll go back to that and that. <laughs> so I just... Yeah, I just spent a lot of time exploring and taking classes, um, taking more classes than doing a conservatory, um, then doing some theater in Chicago, um, and then and then <laughs> went to Juilliard because I met someone who who was brilliant and he played Hamlet and I said I want to be able to do that. What he's doing, I want to be able to do that. So I went to Juilliard <laughs> to, <laughs> to learn how to do that. Yeah. <laughs> well, you did very well. Um, another uh, distinguished graduate of Juilliard, I believe, is Robin Williams, who this theater is, is named after. I know, Stephen, you worked with him uh, on a film, Bicentennial Man. Do you have any uh, memories you want to share of oh, what he was like? Oh, well, I was kind of the villain in that film, so he, he kind of stayed away from me. What I remember most about that film was he was in a, a robot suit, obviously, and it was, it was plastic, and it made lots of noise. And so I think we looped almost the entire film. Really? Because of the noise on his suit, yeah, yeah, yeah. it happens. <laughs> and uh, when you guys were starting out as actors, I mean, who were your role models? Who did you kind of look up to and and try to pattern yourself after, if if possible? Steve and Root. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. I I I, I always I, I'm a character actor, and I love you know to see. To see all the classic guys like Frank Morgan and all the you know the thirties and forties films, but I I was always, I was always the guy that would look at the other guys in the film, not the leads so much, just because they 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 filled the film out and they made it, they made it rich and real, and, and I wanted to do that, and I feel really lucky that I got to to do that a lot. And Betty, did you have heroes or heroines growing up? Yeah, I. <laughs> I'm sort of dating myself, but I really liked, uh, is it Brigitte Nielsen? Yeah, because yeah. of Red Sonia, <laughs> which, I, you know, I was I, way before my time, but um, <laughs> when I finally got around to seeing it, um, <laughs> uh, 
Uh, yeah, I was like, this, that. Because she was a real life She-Ra. Um, I mean, Julia Roberts, of course. There's, yeah, there's plenty of people. Angela Bassett. Basically any woman that could seriously kick my ass or your ass, <laughs> yeah. all of our asses, yeah. like they were, they were it for me. Yeah. Yeah. So. And so this is for the uh, SAG After Foundation. Do you remember what roles got you your SAG card? You mentioned your equity card earlier. Yeah. Uh, Stephen, do you remember what got you your SAG card? I think it was an industrial, actually. I did an industrial that I, I played uh, Roger Ebert in. Really? <laughs> I eat a lot of sandwiches during it, I remember. I don't know. I think it was that. Yeah. yeah. And Betty, you don't have to look quite so far back as into yeah. your past, but do you remember what it was? I think it's purge election year. Yeah. That's what I, yeah. Yeah. And what did it mean to you to, to get the card? I mean, was it uh, a big moment for, for both of you? Oh, yeah, huge. It meant we uh, got much better lunches. <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> No, it was, it was thrilled to, to, to finally get, be in all of them, you know, you get your equity card doing an off-Broadway show, and then you get your SAG card, and then you're on your way. Um, and uh, so, Stephen, you've kind of gone out of your way to have a, a varied career. I mean, how do you manage to cross so many genres, and, you know, you go back and forth between movies and television and comedy and drama. Um, why is that important to you as an actor? Uh, it's really important to me because I, I, I have many friends who've done a lot of sitcoms and, and have gotten stuck in in that. And you have to almost educate casting directors that, n no, I can actually do other things. So I, I had to stop doing sitcom work for a while to take our dramatics to get me into more serious films. So I, 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 I kind of guided it from there. Um, obviously, when you're starting out as a as an actor, as a SAG actor, you you've got you take what you can get, and I did for a long time, and I was very grateful to be, you know, a Botchko boy on his shows, or or do a Roseanne, or 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 whatever else came up. But you, when you get to the point where you've maybe done a couple of shows, um, you want to be able to guide where you're going to go to next, and hopefully that means uh, getting good scripts and working with people who are better than you, so you can get better. So that's what I'm trying to do. And uh, if the Internet Movie Database is to be believed, your first screen role was in Crocodile Dundee 2, is that correct? That's true. And your character <laughs> on the, the website, it says DE agent, and then parentheses, toilet. Yeah. What's, <laughs> <laughs> what do you remember about that? Well, I remember when we shot it here, I was still living in New York at that point, but doing mostly theater. But um, it was a scene where I, I was a detective. I, was, I followed him all over the city and about to lose him. He ducks into a toilet. And, uh, of course, I don't see him in there. I was like, okay, fine. So I start to go. And then behind me, he pulls out his knife and puts it there. <laughs> and that's why. <laughs> and then you were in showbiz. And then I was in showbiz. <laughs> and uh, you mentioned sitcoms. Uh, one of my favorite sitcoms of all time was News Radio. I think one of the most underrated oh, shows of all time. Thanks. I love those people. Uh, that was a great cast. What do you, how do you look back on those years now? I mean, being among those talented people. Um, I, well, I was thrilled to get to know him as people, yeah. you know, even Andy, yeah. with whom I loved so much. Um, but I, I've stayed in touch with them. Uh, I love them. I, it, it was a Paul Sim show. It was really well written. It was one of those NBC shows that uh, maybe should have been a hit, but kept moving around, and, and it wasn't. But it didn't matter because you were doing you were doing comedy that you wanted to do, physical comedy and really smart writing, which Paul Sims did. Um, so I, I, it kind of put me off other sitcom stuff after that because I wanted to, to try to do the quality uh, that I had gotten before. And I really hadn't signed on to one until I'm, I'm doing one for HBO this coming year with Bill Hader because he's a genius. And I really wanted to work with him, and, and we got to. Can you tell us anything about your character on that show? Barry is called, right? Uh, it's, well, Bill, Bill plays a really low-rent hitman. Uh, I play the guy who sends him on the hits, but I'm also sort of a horrible uncle figure that keeps him in sleazy hotels and takes most of his money. Um, but the, <laughs> the pilot premise is that I, I send him to hit an actor in L.A. who is doing something with the mob, and 
he goes down there and checks the actor out and, uh, and calls back to me and says, I think, I think I want to be a, an actor slash hitman. And I go, no, <laughs> no, no, you can't be that. But that's what happens. And that's the premise of that. It's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's really funny. And I hope you guys see it. It's called Barry. And Betty, you also have an exciting HBO-related uh, gig coming up. Yeah. Uh, you're going to be on Westworld season two. Yeah, I have. <laughs> <laughs> I have a yeah. I have a little. Thank you. I have a little part. Yes, but a really big gun. Ooh. And that's all I'm going to say <laughs> about that. <laughs> and I am a human, so I think. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So. Nobody really knows on that show. You might. Yeah. You might not be. Yeah, they don't. They don't, and it's, but it's fine. So how would you say uh, Get Out has affected your, your life and your career? I mean, uh, it's been a pretty high-profile uh, introduction for a lot of people to you. And, and Stephen, it's another feather in your very feather-heavy cap. Wow. Uh, happy, to, happy to be there. <laughs> What's it been like? I mean, how do people react to you when they, when they come up to you and talk to you about the film? I mean, people just straight up come up to me and go, no, 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 no. <laughs> and I go, <laughs> and I just go, thank you. <laughs> I get, I get, um, I really enjoyed hating you. That's, good. That's what I get. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm sure you also get a lot of people coming up to you about office space, which I have to bring up. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I figure my obit will be Milton dead. <laughs> That's not a bad little bit, though. Some, some, I mean, what was the, when you made that film, you couldn't have had any idea that it was going to become what it became, right? But you no. worked with Mike Judge. Like no, what I, I was doing King of the Hill with Mike Judge at the time, so yeah. he used a lot, of, a lot of the people that were doing that show to show it to Fox, and yeah. eventually we got hired to do it, yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, since these are all actors in the audience, I uh, wanted to ask you, what's the best piece of advice you've ever gotten from another actor that you can pass along uh, to the people in the room here? <laughs> perseverance <laughs> because most of the people that I started out with are not in the business uh, and if you, if you don't be in this business unless you have to if you think you can do something else then don't then go do it <laughs> because it takes a lot to stay in it uh, and I have very few friends that stayed in it and the ones that did are good they're really good uh, so I would say that's the most important thing. I mean, I'm sure everybody out here is talented, but it, that's, not, that's not what does it. it. It's working really, really hard and staying in it. And uh, that's all you can do. Are there actors that you've worked with that have had particular impact on you or influence on you uh, along the way? I mean, the... Yeah, the guy who played Hamlet, who, who's my friend. I mean, yeah, he's not yeah. some guy. <laughs> he, I, yeah, that, he, he, he was also, words. He was also a pre-vet major. Oh, really? Yeah, and I thought that was such a, I don't know. I think we actors, we have a very empathetic, like, quality and love the animals, even though I'm not, a vegetarian, but you know, I, I still eat the animals. But I can't help it. I grew up that way. Anyway, um, so yeah, I think just him and seeing, I, 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 you know, and seeing him play Hamlet. I mean, you, we all know Hamlet. We know it's such a like iconic. Like we get it, you know. But to see someone bring, he just he just has a lot of life and like humor, and I think that's what I strive for is is to find the life and, and humor in everything I do. Steven, does anyone stand out on, in your uh, resume as having an impact on you? Well, I, there, I, I have a friend of mine named Rodney Clark who ended up uh, doing Alabama Shakespeare for the last 20, 20 years. So he has played most most of the roles that you'd ever want to play as an actor. So I, I really look up to him. Um, and and go go to see him as much as I can because he's there. He's on stage. He's, you know, he's doing it. And my best friend in the business is uh, Wayne Knight, who played uh, Newman on Seinfeld. 
Yes, and we've kind of, he, he start, we both started out in late 70s in the theater here doing off-Broadway and Broadway. And so he's been kind of my bouncing board, you know. Uh, we can tell each other that we're really horrible or why did you do that piece of shit? <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's okay. You have to have somebody who can completely ground you. He does that for me. And uh, there's been some talk about possibly a Get Out sequel. Would you guys uh, be interested in that if it happened? Or do you have yes. any insight? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I think I got I my head cut off. I don't, I don't, yeah, know. I don't know if either of us Yikes. make it. Uh... <laughs> well, it could be a prequel, maybe. A prequel would probably work no, out. No, no, no. We, awesome. we should do it like, like he's going to do the Twilight Zone thing. Characters do other roles yeah. in yeah. the things, exactly. right? Yeah. 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 Well, you're both amazing in the movie, and uh, good luck at the SAG Awards. Thank you for Thank taking you the time. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Teddy Gabriel and Steve Rook.